Hi everyone, this is Paul here from the Macklin Centre. Today I'm doing the astrology report for the week commencing the 30th of May, outlining some of the key changes and um, aspect patterns formed this week and giving a brief overview of each one means so we can make best use of the energies this week. Before I do that, I just want to clarify as I always do that the astrology doesn't control us in any way, shape or form. It's just a map of what the energies around us are doing and what the different how the energies can potentially manifest but how they happen to form in, within our own lives is dependent on how we choose to respond to things. Because the more we choose to respond from rather than react, and the more we allow wisdom to guide us so that we choose a wiser course of action rather than just reacting out of conditioning, then the more likely we are to make best use of the synergies in a constructive and empowering kind of way. Now in terms of the transits this week, I'll start off with the moon as usual. We'll start off with the Moon in Sagittarius this week, um, having recently had the full Moon in Sagittarius, so the lunar energies are still pretty strong at the moment, and in Sagittarius it's about exploring new ideas and seeking out the truth, and by truth I mean the bigger truth of who we are and how we fit into the world around us, and also to embrace that light-hearted spirit and curiosity in terms of exploring foreign ways of thinking and being so we can see the world more clearly. Then on Thursday the moon moves into Capricorn and this is a time where we need to, we're looking at what kind of goals are we achieving in our lives or um, taking the actions necessary to manifest our goals but it's also about taking responsibility for our lives so that we're not just blaming situations and the people, we take responsibility for how our lives are and start working on improving it by taking responsibility for how we interact with situations. Then on Saturday the moon will move into Aquarius. This is a time where we feel that we need to step back a bit to look at um, the what we've achieved so far but also look at our place or our connection within the community that we have and potentially seeing how we can make become more constructive or more um, useful or how can we help our communities in a better way and then on Tuesday the moon will move into Pisces and this is a time of slowing down trying to meditate if we had if we can and just focusing on achieving that feeling of oneness with everything around us because at the end of the day we are all interconnected we are part of a greater whole and the moon in Pisces can help us to understand this at a feeling level rather than just the mental level of Aquarius. Now in terms of the aspects going on this week, the main change this week is Mercury moving into Gemini on Wednesday. So we've seen this home turf here, so Mercury and Gemini is a strong combination. And this, what we may experience is a sudden increase in a more mental kind of way where our minds, we may feel like our minds or thoughts are suddenly speeding up. Because Gemini is all about communication, it's about perception, and with Mercury being the ruler of Gemini and being an airy planet as it is, this may be time where we may feel our thought patterns speeding up or maybe operating at a more mental level as opposed to the more slow and physical level of Mercury and Taurus. And this is a time for looking at or examining our thoughts and uh, perceptions, um, understanding or working on our logic and um, reasoning abilities, but more importantly, working on our perceptions. So, this is a time where we may feel the urge to speak more or to try and communicate with one another more. But if we make sure going into this that we're focusing on communicating just the truth rather than engaging in any kind of lies or um, gossiping or anything like this. Then we can, make we can make a higher use of this Mercury um, passage through his own sign of Gemini by seeking to make our um, perceptions clearer so we see the world with greater clarity, to work on our communication abilities, so making, it e making sure that how we communicate with people it makes it easier for them to understand what we're saying or what we're trying to communicate and also looking at how we um, portray the truth and trying to f figure out where do we have perceptual biases at the moment, where do we not see things clearly, where do we allow previous experiences or previous thought patterns to hold sway 
that affect the way we perceive things and mean that we don't see things as clear as we think we do. This is where conscious communication with one another can overcome these problems because we all have different biases in how we perceive things. So by sharing our own truths and our own perceptions, we can help reveal to each to one another um, both parties' perceptual biases so they can be released and both parties should therefore be empowered to see things with greater clarity so it's not blinded by conditioning. The other um, aspects, um, sweet, or one of the other aspects is the sun will be in conjunct Jupiter exactly on um, Tuesday and this is a time where we may find that um, we're having to constantly make adjustments to try and incorporate the expansive energies of Jupiter or trying to incorporate the insights or wisdom that Jupiter retrograde and Scorpio is bringing up. Because with an in conjunct, it's like trying to get oil and water to mix. So we may experience a need to make frequent adjustments around this time so that um, the whatever insights we have or whatever higher understanding we get glimpses of, we're actually incorporating them into our sense of identity rather than keeping our identity and the um, insights separate. So it's trying to break through that tendency to compartmentalise the different areas of life and instead find a way to work, get two areas which don't normally mesh to work together and to transform one another. And during, towards the end of this week we're going to be like feeling the beginnings of a square between the Sun and Neptune. That aspect won't be exact until the following week, but it's worth mentioning now because with the Sun square to Neptune, this is about because Neptune is you know, pure con consciousness, it's our connection or the window into the deeper realms of spirit, if you like. And when it touches the Sun, which is our sense of identity, and for many of us, it's it can operate from an ego perspective. This square can cause a bit of clashing, as it were, or a bit of confusion between who we think we are and the insights coming in. So one thing we need to be mindful of is where do we engage in any kind of escapism tendencies. This could be things like um, alcohol, um, drugs, eating foods that modify our brain chemistry, trying to sleep um, more, um, but not so because we need the extra sleep, we're just trying to avoid reality as it is, so we'd rather just lie in bed. And instead we need to look at how can we incorporate this, uh, how can we incorporate the spirituality, or how can we transform our understanding of ourselves and realise that we are spirit anyway. <clears throat> We're not this skin encapsulated ego, we are spiritual beings, but we have to do the um, work of breaking free of those egoic perceptions and work through those illusions that we cling to because they bring a sense of comfort but they also um, stop us from growing. So we need to be looking at ourselves clearly or honestly and see where do we need to, because we may find that we tend to procrastinate with things like spiritual practice, so where do we need to work on that spiritual practice to help us break through the illusions we cling to, to transform our sense of self-identity through allowing the Neptunian qualities like psychic sensitivity, empathy, intuition to be incorporated into us um, who we are rather than being seen as something completely separate and alien to who we are. Um, another aspect pattern this week is it's going to be a grand water trine and this is involving Venus in Cancer, Jupiter in um, retrograde in Scorpio and Neptune in Pisces. Now partway through this does become a kite formation with um, Venus opposing Pluto because the thing with the Grand Trine is the energy is very smooth flowing but it's also closed circuit so quite often we just don't re realise or don't notice the opportunity that's right in front of us because we take it for granted. It's flowing so smoothly and so harmoniously that we don't really bother making effort to work on it. So with um, Venus forming this um, this grand trine to the to Neptune and Jupiter, with Neptune and Jupiter already trying one another. With it being in water, this is about emotions, but more most importantly, it's about love. 
is about the relationships because the trine between Jupiter and Neptune that is ongoing this is about showing that generosity again towards all people it's showing that kindness and compassion to one another with Venus in Cancer this brings the more personal domain of relationships and how we relate with one another into the picture and it's also about our values what values do we have so with the trine to Neptune this asks us to work on incorporating a more spiritual kind of love or unconditional love towards people rather than the norm, the usually conditional kind of love that Venus has because Venus is mainly usually focused in the realms of one-to-one -one relationships but this trine between Neptune and Venus is about expanding that um, love so it becomes a more all-encompassing love but for this to happen we have to create that love on the inside first we have to use that um, trans transcendent energy of Pisces to elevate the love we have for ourselves and to be able to receive that kind of love and if we develop this love for self it tops us up to the point that it's overflowing and then we can give love unconditionally to other people without being drained by it and with Jupiter over in Scorpio if we at the same time deal with any fears that we have towards love any fears that we have about connecting yeah, more deeply with other people and to get rid of these emotional patterns from the past and this can also Neptune and Pisces can also help here through using that dissolving kind of energy of Pisces to naturally dissolve those kinds of inner barriers and inner resistance to this kind of love and the fears that keep us operating in the shadows and allow those fears to be shared so that we recognise that we are worthy of love, we are worthy of belonging and we have the capacity to love um, one another in an empowering way where it's not about what can the other person do for us nor is it necessarily what we can do for other people as well, it's, all, it's about how can we achieve that mutual empowerment, how can we achieve that mutual love where the love empowers both parties and creates a virtuous cycle between each um, person involved and with Neptune and Pisces this also extends outwards to the collective how can we become a beacon of love how can we radiate that love for one another now with Pluto coming into the mix um, towards the end because this particular grand trine is strongest around about the weekend so Saturday Sunday but with Venus moving into the opposition with Pluto it's also about our values and how can we transform those values so they're not operating from the ego or the materialistic perspective we're looking at more spiritual values and how can we transform the um, way we relate with one another by facing the kinds of power dynamics that we normally engage in and choosing to do things another way choosing to rather than try and control one another see how can we, we can better understand where each person is coming from this doesn't mean that we um, take bullshit it doesn't mean that we put up with any abusive kind of behavior or anything like that but it is about learning to have that honest open, open communication with one another and to see how can we achieve a more empowering kind of relationship through facing any dysfunctional um, patterns that we, of relating we have at the moment and how can we learn to value authenticity more in relationships rather than um, doing things where we're pursuing an illusion or pretending to be something that we're not in order to keep someone happy but we can't experience true love within a relationship if we don't be true to who we are because the other person is not going to see us for who we really are they're just going to see the mask we're wearing this is about getting real and loving ourselves enough to be open and authentic rather than hiding behind masks easier said than done but we can only truly feel a sense of belonging with one another if we're true to who we are and we show people who we are so they can embrace us for who we are rather than um, just embracing a mask thinking that that's who we are so there's a lot to take on um, board um, there especially from the um, Grand Shrine if we use this energy consciously then there's a lot of potential for us to transform ourselves and transform the way we relate to one another so that we 
operate more in a vibration of love towards one another rather than a vibration of fear. And if we can face our emotional patterns that hold us back and shine the light of awareness on them, learn to love those shadow parts of ourselves, then we can shed the dysfunctional patterns and allow a more empowering kind of love to um, forge between one another that uplifts um, each person in that relationship and keeps going in a virtuous cycle so more love is unlocked and therefore deeper le layers of intimacy or levels of intimacy rather can be achieved between one another. This isn't purely in romantic relationships either, it can also be about developing greater trust within um, our most um, close or closest friendships and closest communities. But obviously we have to do the work on ourselves to release any negative conditioning that we have in order for that to be possible. But I hope the week brings you uh, many blessings and much growth. Take care and be blessed.